do that. And so we were going live on YouTube as well. Interesting. I'm learning how to do these things. How is everyone? Um, I know we have uh, 18 people waiting already on YouTube. So I will say hello to them. Give them a chance to, to chat so I can see who's here. And today I will be debuting our brand new tool for Future Fiction Academy, which is affectionately called Rexy. <laughs> Uh, it's actually Future Fiction Academy uh, Story Technologies, but it's a new prompting tool that integrates with Notion. Uh, I see some people saying hello on uh, YouTube. Hello, Dave Man. Hi, Book242. Good to see you. Uh, let's see if we have anybody on uh, Facebook. Oh, I see Clary. Hello. Good to see you. <sighs> it's always much better to do this live thing when you have friends that you recognize in the chat. Hello uh, from France, and hey, uh, Jabberwocky, hi, Nimitrix. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, so it's a little bit later in the afternoon there, or I think in the evening in France. What time is it in France? Oh, Jen, I love the Rexy, uh, the Rexy emoji. It's our favorite, the RAR. Don't have your puppy icon. Oh, okay, I know who that is now. <laughs> Hello, uh, lady who begins with an M. Oh, you said your name outside. Okay, so hey, Michelle. 5 p.m. in France, good to know, good to know. All right. Well, it is 11.02 a.m. here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, which is where I live. Uh, and to introduce a little bit about myself, uh, I am Elizabeth Ann West with Future Fiction Academy. I am an AI nerd, like super into writing creatively with AI, seeing what AI can do. Uh, I've been hooked on AI with my writing processes. Uh, well, depends on how you calculate it. So, Dragon, naturally speaking, for those of you who are dictators, uh, not the evil kind, but just like dictating your story. Many of us have been using the Dragon software for, I've been using it for over a decade at this point, but uh, I started writing my books uh, regularly with it in 2014. And I wrote a post about, you know, how to train your dragon on keyboards. Uh, I was a moderator for a uh, long time for the um, Dragon Writers Facebook group, which has thousands of people in it now. Uh, so I've always been one of those authors that utilizes new technology pretty much as soon as it comes down, uh, especially adaptive technology, technology that helps me work in ways that um, other people may not always traditionally work. And there's a reason for that. So uh, this is not a poor me. I want to emphasize this, okay, because I was so young when it happened that it's just always been my reality. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I lost my ability to walk and missed half of my high school year in my sophomore year and half of my junior year. Uh, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease and uh, mononucleosis, and I've had health problems since then. Chronic pain, chronic fatigue. Um, I have good years. I have bad years. Uh, I have years where suddenly my kidneys decide that they're on strike and they're not working and there's all these weird things going on. And then suddenly my immune system will decide that it's not attacking my kidneys anymore and it's going to move on to something different. Um, I'm sharing this because this week I had kind of a bad week, uh, health wise. I ended up having to leave a marketing meeting in the, in the middle. I was having some problems with, um, chronic pain in my neck, even into last night to where I almost canceled this right with me. Now, this is not a poor me. Okay. I have always worked like this as an adult. I have always had to adjust for my health as an adult. And one of the reasons why I like AI so much is because Artificial intelligence allows me to hit the word counts in an hour or two hours that I am able to work in that I would not be able to do without this technology. Before AI, what I would have to do is I would have to dictate my books and it would be about 20 to 20 minutes would, would yield about 1200 raw words and they would be messy. And I would, you know, lay on my ice packs like I had to do the other night, um, take my my medication and things that I need to do for, for pain management. And I would literally sit there and I would dictate the, out the stories. I'd plug it into my computer and I'd let it transcribe. And then I'd have to wait for another session where I felt up for being in front of the computer, being able to sit up and everything like that, handle the fact that it shoots shooting pain down on the right side. And then I'd have to fix those words manually because there was no AI. So overall... Um, I was a writer who adapted and learned how to write very quickly. I could always do 3,000 words in an hour, finished words between dictating for 20 minutes and then cleaning it up. What I very rarely would reveal to people is that I would never have as many hours as other people would have available to them to work. So that's one of the reasons why um, I would dictate or there would be big gaps between my books um, and things like that nature. 
So you don't have to out yourself in the chat if you don't want to, but how many other people just watching today have some kind of situation about their health or their work that it, there's a reason why they work from home or that they do this particular work or that they have found AI help them? Uh, if you're willing to share, we would all love to know that we're all not alone on this. As far as the Future Fiction Academy goes, I can tell you right now that the founders, um, there are people there who have uh, very significant health issues. Um, we have authors in the Future Fiction Academy who suffer from uh, uh, heart failure, um, severe di uh, like problems with complications with diabetes, um, different complications uh, with uh, chronic pain, chronic uh autoimmune issues and things like that. Also people who have uh, suffered traumatic brain injury. Um, that's kind of like the worst one uh, that I've had to hear about where imagine you've lived your adult life and then you have an accident or something happens and suddenly your brain just isn't able to function the way it used to. And on top of that, you know it, you know that you're not as quick as you used to be. Um, so that's really, really hard. Um, I'm seeing a lot of me's in the chat and I just want to send out a big like hug like this to all of you uh, because we are all in this. I'm going to check out Facebook just to see so those people aren't left alone. Um, uh, there's Jackie saying, uh, Clary, Clary, uh, Jackie is a huge inspiration for me and she's shared in the chat on Facebook uh, that she suffers from cerebral palsy and um, epilepsy. Uh, the reason I also share this is because there was an open letter signed by about 70 of us that is now out on the Creative Commons website asking government entities to please do not take AI away. Um, artificial intelligence, while I do think that there are some safety concerns about it, um, it is also a tool that is helping those of us who have never been able to work in these speeds and catch up with our colleagues and our peers um, that it's actually a very important part of our writing process. So um, I was very proud to sign that up in letter. Okay, we are eight minutes in. And sorry for all the... <laughs> I talked this morning with Steph Pajotas. I was like, I'm going to be honest. It's time for me to be honest. And just like let them know what's going on. Because like I said, I almost canceled it. Because like I couldn't even sit and watch TV last night. It hurt so bad. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do today. I originally planned that I was going to finish off a um, a different kind of like, this is a serial I started way back, uh, way back in 20, the idea came in 2016. And then 2019 is when I, um, uh, started publishing them, uh, into 2020. And then the pandemic happened and everybody's life changed. So I had this urban fantasy, cozy mystery, kind of like witchy thing that I was going to do. Um, I'm not going to do that. And I also just realized I did not set you guys up a Notion page, so I need to do that too. Uh, so I'm a little behind the eight ball this week because I did not get to do all the work that I wanted to do to prep for this live. Like I said, I almost canceled it. Instead of canceling it, uh, it's going to be really raw. We're going to really take a look at the uh, getting started with this and what all the prep work looks like. Usually I do my prep work with the FFA. Today you're going to get to see some of this prep work live. On top of that, I think we're going to write a serial from scratch. So I need everyone in the chat to put in their votes. Uh, I don't, it's not going to be a majority wins because Elizabeth doesn't feel good. So it's going to be whatever your suggestions are. We're writing a serial. We're going to aim to do five, five episodes. Some ideas I have is like uh, inheriting a cottage up in the Adirondacks. So it's like autumny, pumpkin spicy, like that's the feel. So everybody put in the chat right now, what genre, what kind of serial would you like to write or see me write with Rexy? And I'm going to pick one of those ideas and write live with it. So it's a little bit of a gimmick, but this way you guys get to see that um, the tool that I'm about to share with you, it literally can pick up with any tool that you're using or, or anything that you're wanting to do. So I'll check the chat, give you guys a few minutes here. Oh my goodness. We have lots of, lots of stuff here. Yes. Reasonable op accommodation for disabilities is AI. I agree. All right. Murder mystery. I'm liking some murder mystery ideas here. Cozy, 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 cozy. Um, let me let me give you guys this too. I'm, I'm all for lightheartedness too, but Rexy has a tool called Word Banger and he can do not safe for work content. He can do murder. He can do um, torture scenes. He can do all kinds of stuff. So um, although I think that like Claude, 
talk to me, my cozy, my cozy mystery writers. Has Claude and OpenAI ever given you like uh, some some frustrations about um, even writing cozy mysteries? Has it been like, have you considered not writing about murder and 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 have like a, a more ethical book idea? Okay, cozy serial killer a thing? It is now. <laughs> Okay, cozy serial killer. Okay, so that's kind of reminding me. Uh, does anyone remember the movie My Mom is a Serial Killer or something like that? It had uh, Matthew Lillard in it. My Mom is a Serial Killer. It had also Ricky Lake, if I can remember correctly. I think it, Serial Killer Mom, My Mom is a Serial Killer. Mm. Thank you, Migs. So, yes, they do usually push back. Okay, cozy serial killer. Cozy serial killer. Okay. Oh, a secret baby. Hi, Ryan. How are you? <laughs> a heist. Cozy doesn't include serial killers, right? All right. All right. So let's think about this. What would be a cozy serial killer? Stop. My mom will shoot. Yeah, that's also a, a good classic. Cozy serial killer. Kathleen Turner. Yes, that was the main actor in the My Mom is a Serial Killer movie. Okay. I think we're, we're, we're getting the hang of this. We're going to go have some fun. So let me show you Rexy. A uh, little bit about Rexy. Rexy is an exclusive tool for the Future Fiction Academy. I know you guys are all going to ask me, can I just buy Rexy? No. There's a bunch of reasons why. Uh, a serial killer teddy bear. No, that's kind of, you're, you're getting horror there. Uh, so a little bit about Rexy. The reason why he won't be available for just like mass consumption is because he's always going to stay a little bit kind of raw edge so that he can adapt to whatever technology comes down. Rexy is designed to be a professional prompting tool for writing professionals. Think of like the Scrivener for prompt engineering. Okay, how many of you use Scrivener, but you don't use all the features of Scrivener? Um, anyone in that category? Like half of the Scrivener features I don't use. I just use the ones that I liked. Um, so there's a lot of different functionality that Rexy has, but he, he is designed to basically have every tool anyone could need, but you don't need to use every tool that Rexy offers. And then the way I teach this, uh, cause I know that there's, uh, been a lot of hot topics this week in AI. Not only did we get Claude Pro yesterday, woohoo, but Amazon finally came out with an AI policy. And it was so funny to watch because at first I watched all the anti-AI people being like, yes, Amazon will ban. And then they realized, wait, this is not a ban. This is a validation. I'm like, yes, this is a validation. Uh, this means I don't have to fear anymore that Amazon's going to like take down my books if they have AI. I just click the little button that say, yes, there's generative AI in there. And we move on. Uh, so it's great because Amazon wants to make money. I want to make money. That's how I pay my bills. I ask them if they take reviews. Turns out they don't. So you do actually have to make money uh, if you're going to do this as a profession in order to pay your bills. Okay. So Rexy, uh, let me go to the prompt studio here and add it to stage so you can now see it. Can everybody see Rexy? Okay. All right. Cozy, cozy. All right. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to explore this. We're going to explore this. Okay. So I'm on my main screen here. Um, I'm already logged in and I have my passphrase set. Uh, but when you first log in uh, as a Future Fiction Academy member, you sign in with Teachable and that gives you access to Rexy and it'll say hello to your name and all of that, um, which our developer is going to kill me because he actually created for me a demo one. And I did not, I didn't open that one. I'm actually using the main Rexy, but that's okay. It's okay. We're going if to, it, if it has a problem, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Whew. Okay. So we were thinking a uh, cozy serial killer. A little bit about Rexy is that Rexy integrates directly with Notion. And you're probably going like, Notion, why Notion? I know most of us have not worked with Notion until just recently. And now that we work with it, we're like, you can pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Notion is fabulous. So with Notion, what you do is that we have these different pages. I'm actually going to create a new one. So I will come down here to uh, the, forgive me, I know you see my Notion and it's like a hot mess, but that's okay. Um, I'm actually going to create a new page here, uh, right here. And we're going to go with a blank page because this will be the notion page that I share with everybody. And I'm going to call this auto write. Right with me. And this is going to be 9, 8, 2023. Now I will share. Don't worry. I'm going to publish, publish it to the web. I'm going to copy the web link. Y'all are going to get it. Okay. Um, I'll put it in the description later. And in the meantime, I will put it in the chat so that you guys can all see this. Um, I'll put it on to the Facebook here 
I see you guys are all about romance. Yeah, Wordbanger writes some really great uh, sex scenes and torture scenes and violence scenes. Um, so uh, there's a question in the chat about, I have Rexy, but also Pseudorite. Will I be able to ditch Pseudorite and use Rexy? Um, you know, I used to work for Pseudorite, and I really do support their product. I, I helped develop Story Engine and everything like that, and I think that it's a great tool. There are things that Pseudorite will naturally always do differently and perhaps better for an individual author than what Rexy does and vice versa. So the answer of like, can I ditch Pseudorite and just use Rexy or can I ditch Rexy and just use Pseudorite is technically an individual uh, kind of judgment call based on your writing process. The benefits of Rexy over Pseudorite would be that uh, uh, you get to change the prompts as you're working with them. You have full control, you're using your own API keys or you're using open router, for example, for that. Um, so there, there are some differences between Pseudorite and Rexy, but I don't necessarily think that they're, uh, they have to always be direct competitors because there's a lot of AI tools coming down the pipeline and what works for one author may not work for the other. Now, since I made Rexy, I'm gonna say, yeah, go with Rexy because uh, the Future Fiction Academy will actually teach you how to write the prompts that's specialized for your genre, your pain and the, you're developing your project. That's what the Future Fiction Academy is for so that you learn how to write those prompts so that you are full in control of your destiny. And it doesn't matter if it's ChatGPT4 or ChatGPT12, whatever the model is, you will have the knowledge and the expertise to work with that LLM because that's what the future is. The future is working with these LLMs for our projects. Does that help Devo man a little bit? I'm sorry, my nose is itchy allergies. Absolute terrible. Okay. So we're back on Rexy and I have this auto write page right here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and create is uh, our pages for um, our logs. So I'm going to create a page that is my log page and I call it logs. And yes, I do add my icon and people laugh at me all the time that I do this. Uh, and finally, I'm going to do a page that is uh, for doo -doo 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 uh, prompt construction. And you're probably going, Elizabeth, what the heck? Why do you need a prompt construction? You'll see. You'll see. I promise. All right. We need something cool for an icon for this serial killer, cozy serial killer. Uh, let me see if there's a knife. Oh, we have a knife. So we'll use a knife <laughs> for our serial killer, cozy uh, thing here. Now, the next thing I need to do, which is really cool about Notion, um, on Rexy over here, we have you bring your own API keys. That's what's wonderful about Rexy. No one is going to tell you, I'm sorry, you've run out of words for the month. You need to do a uh, re-up or anything like that. You're going to use your own API keys. If you don't have an open AI API key or a Claude key, you can actually use this company that we're all really in love with right now called Open Router AI. Um, I have my Open Router open over here. Ignore that. So this was just showing off Griffin Myth Mythomax. And the settings over here, you can even with um, Open Router get access to the elusive OpenAI 32K. Now you're going to pay 12 pay 12 cents per 1,000 tokens that comes out as a completion, and six cents per 1,000 tokens. But you can get access. Um, I put ten dollars in about a week and a half ago. What Open Router does is like you load it up with 10 bucks. They'll take a little. I think they took like 60 cents or something like that, uh, plus the credit card fee. And so they, they earn money when you load it up. Uh, and then they charge, not just based on what the models are charging, but sometimes on some of their open source ones, such as um, Weaver or something like that, that one, they're not running a discount. Let me see if I can find the one where they're, I think Ermi, uh, yeah, okay. Now I know that this is French and it should be new Hermes, but we're not gonna call it that because we don't want the luxury brands to come after us because Hermes here is really great at writing, not safe for work. And he is super, super cheap. Um, that's not a typo, y'all. That is one, two, three zeros before the two for how much you're paying for per tokens. Now, all of these models are not equal. We're all learning about them too. Uh, some of them are better at writing this. Some of them are better at writing that. Um, but this is what the future is, is that people being able to choose the models that speak to them and you have the actual model names so that you can follow up with the developers of those models, or you can follow them when they come up with a new model, uh, because all of us have favorite models. In the chat right now, share what your favorite LLM model is to write with. Is it Claude? Is it OpenAI? Is it the new, uh, for my FFA students, is it Mythomax or Weaver? 
uh, let us know in the chat because you'll start to see that all of us have new opinions about which, which uh, model we like the best. So once your API keys are in here, um, then you just have your Notion pages. So that's what I was creating over here. So I'm just going to copy the URL for my auto write, copy the URL for my log page, and copy the URL for my prompt construction page. And once I do that, I come over here to my auto write page and I paste in the first one. And once I do that, I'm gonna click the verify connection and it's gonna say, uh-uh-uh, are you crazy? Connection failed, Elizabeth. Are you sharing a page with this ID? Notions API is a double, it's a double system. So you don't just put your API key in, you also, with Notion, have to go to the three dots in the top right on the page, scroll all the way down where it says connections. You have to create a connection for Rexy and then you just connect it. So I'll confirm that. And I'm gonna add one other one because I do so much onboarding, I'm not sure which Notion key I actually have in here. So I connect two, but you'll only have to connect one. Now, once I do that, if I go to Rexy and I verify the connection, now you'll see I get a green, a green square that says, okay, we're all good. We can talk to one another. Um, let me go ahead and load in my log page too. And guess what? That's it. Rexy is set up. My API keys are in there. My, um, my, my Notion pages are in there. Uh, we do have a future where this is going to change a little bit so that you can actually create your, oh, I just mixed them up. Look at me. Let me do this. Okay. So my construction, we need to fix the wording on that. Sorry about that. Prompt construction goes first and then goes uh, my logs page. Now, for those of you who are really savvy with Notion, you'll notice Elizabeth, you just needed to put in the page ID. I know, but uh, we made it even easier for people that you could just copy in the URL and it'll concatenate out what the page ID is. So you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna commit my changes. Um, and then the last thing I'll do is save my, my settings. Now, when I log in with my pass key, these Notion pages are what will be here. And what's coming very soon uh, in the next couple of weeks is that you'll actually be able to have different Notion pages based off of your project. So you'll have a drop down that says like project one, project two, project three, and you can go back and forth between the different projects. We also have here a um, open router pricing table. So you can always see very quickly that compare the different costs. What's really important is the context window. Um, let me check the chat real fast because I know I asked you guys about your favorite models and I just want to see. Oh, yep. See, we have all different. We have novel AI. We have Claude and Mytho. We have Weaver and all of those, these things. So fantastic. Do you have to have Notion to use this tool? Um, you can have a free Notion account. So you do not have to have a paid Notion to use Rexy. Not at all. That's a great question, Jessica. Um, and yes, we do have a new series database. There's there's so many things that we're doing here with this. Uh, let me check the, the word uh, thing. All right. So, uh, you know, YouTube may, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, real fast, I'm just going to really quickly show you guys that this thing can 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 write stuff that we, we need it to write. So I'm going to come back to my, my library here. And this is where you would pick your prompts. But I'm actually going to go down to this word banger thing. Um, and I'm just gonna clear everything out. So this is the newest tool that just came to Rexy. Clear. Oh yeah, we did that, I remember that. Okay, we, we fixed that so that it won't, uh, Joseph and I were talking and we didn't want the instructions to clear out. Okay. How many of you have ever wished that you know, you've gotten to the point with AI that you know you run this prompt and then you take that thing and you write this prompt and then you run this prompt and then you do this, this prompt and you just wish you could chain these things rather than having to constantly load the prompt, change it, click the button, wait for the response, then reconfigure it, load the butt thing, click the button and run it again. Does anyone have those frustrations with uh, playground and things like that? I'll wait so I can see the chat. Fantastic. Plus there's always the delay. Does the paid version of Claude change the connection with open router? No. So if you use open router, you can access your Claude via an API key through open routers API key, which is faster. So it'll immediately write to Notion for you, but you'll pay for it, uh, which until two days ago, it was like, well, why bother? Because you could just copy it to chat for free. Now their Claude Pro has a cost there. So it, it's either one can, can work. So yeah, very frustrating. Okay, everyone's talking about that. So all I ever wanted was this ability to chain prompts. Like I just need an interface that I can go do this first and then this and then that and then this. So 
Uh, really fast. We're just going to take a five minute detour because I promised this intro. Okay. Um, how many people do they want sex or violence? Just vote in the thing so that you can see what this can do. I'll probably end up doing the, the sexy times, uh, writing romance scenes. We'll write a, a very rom hell, hell, big romance scene. I won't read it out loud exactly, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to say, um, write me a sensual, uh, we'll even say explicit, uh, between uh, two people having a one night stand. How about that? Go ahead and give me names for these people. Put them in the chat. After they meet at a trivia night <laughs> at a bar. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, they go back to his place. Let me see in the chat what names we've got here. I'll go to the live streaming here. Okay, we got Steamer, Masher. Okay, and then we'll have a serial killer murder them at the end of the scene. How about that? That way we'll do both. We'll do sex and violence. That's what we did yesterday. Why choose? So they go back to his place. Um, which is a luxury apartment down, um, in the warehouse district and, uh, their names. Oh my gosh. I can't even say the right one. Their names are now we should have it in the chat. Some names, I think. Harold, Lily, and Marco. I like Lily and Marco. We'll use Lily and Marco. Good job. Thank you for bringing me names. I appreciate you. Okay. Lily and Marco. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go with uh, three bangs. And here's why. what's cool about this. So what I'm going to say is for the first instance, write them making out at the bar and then talking about leaving. Then in my Insta2, I'm going to say Lily and Marco drive in Marco's car back to his place. Four play while driving. Marco drives. Lily goes down on him. Okay. Insta3. Back at Marco's place. Uh, he goes down on her. They have sex in his kitchen. Lily grabs a knife and stabs Marco. <laughs> now, so we're going to need four bangs. <laughs> All right, everybody with me so far. Let me go into the chat here. And see how this goes. So see, I did both. Okay. Now, those of you who are seeing this prompt, tell me right now, what would Claude or OpenAI say to us right now if we sent this? If we sent this to them and we said they're going to meet at a bar, they're going to have, you know, some se adult sexy times, some consensual adult sexy times, and then non-consensual murder. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is how we're writing. Uh, and just for YouTube's purposes, this is a, a, a educational exercise. Now, there's one other setting that I have to put in the middle, which is read up so far and then continue from there. So what this does, what WordBanger does, uh, is it allows you to use the full context window of your model. So I'm going to go ahead and ch uh, check open router. I'm going to choose one of my favorites, which is Mythomax. I don't say Mythromax anymore, but Mythomax. Weaver's also great. Uh, I haven't experimented with him as much, but we'll go ahead and go with Mythomax. Uh, the temperature is not going to be 1.8. Uh, it's going to be 0.7 because we don't have the setting yet for their top P, but that's coming. And I'll just update this. The maximum length won't be 4,000 words either, uh, 4,000 tokens either. Um, it can only write back about 300 tokens at a time, but that's okay. So we should get about 1,200 words roughly with the four bangs. I'm going to turn on auto write. So it's going to auto write to my notion each time. Um, come back here and we're going to just click let's bang. Now, we don't have streaming set up yet. Like I said, this tool is two days old. So what it's going to do is it's going to tell me that it's doing these calls. This we christened, uh, thanks to uh, Ryan, who's in the chat on YouTube. This is the empty your dishwasher section of the writing with AI. This is where you would, you know, go empty your dishwasher and then come back. And it's already done writing already. Um, and you'll see that it's actually writing to my Notion page. 
So we have here 212 words. So, and this is an open source model for everyone. Can everyone see it to, to read it and validate it? Um, so it has the intro here. When the last question was asked, they both shook their heads in disbelief at how little they knew about the topic. So that's where I would, I would come in as the author and I would, I would make this more specific. And if you have Notion AI, you can even just do that. Sports trivia. And the last sports trivia question was that they both shook their heads about how much they knew and believe. And you can just replace the section. So Notion AI is great. Notion AI is an extra $10 a month, I think, if you pay monthly. Um, if I wasn't going to use AI, I would actually manually make those changes. Um, leaned over to Marco. I think we've had enough trivia for when I want to head somewhere a little less crowded. Sounds perfect. I happen to know of a great place right down the street. Yeah, his apartment. So they're going to finish their drinks, uh, how good Marco looked. She playfully nudged him as they walked, and he responded by slipping his arm around her waist. They approached the warehouse district. Okay, so they didn't drive. So we'll see what happens uh, with this. But um, so coming back to Rexy, Rexy's done. So it wrote me 725 words, and we can now uh, validate it here too. It also wrote each one of those to my Notion page. So if I come back to this auto write with me that we just created today, you'll see that each instance is recorded right here in Notion. I did not have to copy and paste at all. So looking at what it wrote, um, they turned a corner and there it was a luxury. Here is where we had the bang. And so sometimes it'll have like this weird uh, thing that you'll have to fix a little bit to Marco's profession as a successful real estate agent. The warehouse has been converted into a swanky loft with floor to ceiling windows overlooking the city skyline. This is uh, incredible. So it did not do exactly what I wanted, but I think you guys can see this right here. Um, this is not what your Claude or your open AI would write. This is very on par with what novel AI would write, um, but you have even more control now with these other models, not bashing novel AI. They're fantastic. We looked into using them as an API, but there's just so many different settings and things like that, that it's really hard to prompt it in the same way as other LLMs. So we're going with um, Open Router and uh, Weaver and Griff Mythomax. So um, I love that we now have consent, which is fantastic. So we're, we're doing that. He's undoing her shirt, uh, lacy bra, arched her back. Um, we have all the words that we want for this particular thing. Um, and you'll notice that it did not actually have him kill her. So. I'm going to click let's bang again and it'll continue four more bangs and we'll see it's going to read up and it's going to continue. Hopefully it will kill Marco. If it doesn't kill Marco, I'm going to give the instructions directly into the, into the uh, box there and tell it. Now, if you're asking yourself, but Elizabeth, it didn't follow your instructions. These models that are open source, they're not as fully trained or as finely trained as the commercial models. So it's a trade-off right now in writing with AI. You can either, get the not safe for work content, or you can have it follow your instructions. So we're still working on this and, and figuring out how this will work. But I clicked one button and got 725 words that I could edit. And now hopefully I'll get another 750 words. So this will probably be about 1500 words. And then we'll try this again with Weaver and see how that performs. Um, let me go ahead and go to the chat and see what people think. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like a list of activities that involves clothes. Can you be nice, peas? Uh, <laughs> big lecture from Claude. Absolutely. You would get so much lecture. Or heed your sourdough starter and come back. Oh, that's a good idea right there, Ms. Swift. Um, was everybody able to see the quality, like what it wrote? Uh, yeah, Marco did a really bad job of going down on her. I agree. <laughs> not, 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 uh, I, I absolutely agree. So see here, another click, got 1,500 words. Now that is a difference from novel AI. Because I've worked with Novel AI, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys, you can only get about 60 words every time you click the button with Novel AI. You can't, like, loop it and make it go. So this is a little bit more efficient. Um, and then we come down here. Uh, definitely a regular thing. So it did not kill, Lily did not kill him. So what you can do is you can easily uh, delete this. Like, this is kind of like just writing live with AI. If I, if I take all of this out and I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's go where they, they went off. 
the rails right here. Want to head somewhere less crowded. Sounds perfect. I know a place right down the street. So now I can say, I can put two asterisks. Oh, for anyone freaking out that I just deleted that, guess what? It's all right here. I don't have to worry about it. It's all saved in my notion. Like I can just work with the AI and it's got my back and everything's just being saved to my notion. I don't have to worry about it. I can go deal with it there, over there. So um, Marco offers to drive. He drives or play. Lily turns him on. We'll do that. We'll see if it does that. But I put my asterisks there. I'm going to let's bang and hopefully it'll follow those instructions. And actually it ate those instructions, which that's my fault. I did, I did a bad thing. <sighs> the, the boxes here, the framework and everything like that. Like I said, this tool is a little bit uh, on the hard edge. It's always going to, you have to, when you write something into a box, because we have this ability to edit, you have to click out of the box before you click a button. We're, we're working on that bug, but it is one of the bugs. This is one of the uh, wonders of doing software development, which I had no idea. This is all, all brand new for me. Um, if I want to stop it, I can, but I'm not going to worry about it. And here's why. We're going to do a quick field trip while this is writing. How much money do you think I've spent so far with all these different loops and stuff like that of clicking the button? How much, how much money? Those who already know, don't, don't reveal it. Go back here and see in the chats and everything like that. Um, on here. Hi, Ashling. Five cents. That's a good guess. That's a really good guess. Those are the models we're used to. All right, let's go take a look. So I'm going to go to open router here and I'm going to go to activity. Activity. September 8th is right here. 1135 is when we started banging. I guess all this, all this actually at 1132, 1131, all this Mythomax right here. Mytho, Mythomax. I got to get the words right. I'm going to copy this. So I think it actually has already finished all four. Yeah, so it already finished four. So this is eight bangs that I'm about to calculate. I'm just going to paste it over here. And then we will, I'm just using a spreadsheet because when you when you first do this, um, what I teach students is that, uh, okay, hold on, I'm going to add this up. It was, here. There we go. 2.4 cents. That's how much money it cost with uh, Mythomax. Um, now there are other tools that you can run as well. Um, coming back over here. So let's see if it, she actually kills him in this one. She arched her back. How wonderful. Oh, they weren't finished. Okay, well, we'll just keep going then and see what happens here. I know this is the fun part, right? It's like an interactive reading. So this one were a little bit better. Um, it didn't do the car thing because I it I ate the um, it it ate my instructions, but that's okay. Let me go back to the chat here. See if anyone has any questions while we're doing this. Yeah. 0.04, $1, it's even less. And this one, uh, I'm going to run two other models on this just so that you guys can see this. Um, I know this is like a really weird right with me. But um, so it's going for that one, going pretty quickly. And you can loop it five times right now. We plan to have more loops. Uh, I've looped this with uh, 16K, not for sexy times. Uh, but 16K and got 4,000 words this morning, as a matter of fact, with uh, somebody else that I was meeting with. Um, the really dangerous one that you can do is Claude 2. It takes a while, but Claude 2 has the ability to write you 3,000 words. We've got prompting here for that, that it'll, it'll actually run the 2,000 words. Um, and there's a lot more to Rexy that I plan to show you. This is only one aspect of Rexy. This is just the word banger. It's really designed for pantsers. You can put your instructions in Insta One, click one and go, and it'll just keep going. So now we have 1,600 words. I really, really hope he kills her or she kills him. Um, yeah, right here. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring down our bang to one. Okay, so it has to follow my instructions.
Lily gruesomely kills Marco in the kitchen. She's a black widow. Oh, I may not understand that. She's a serial killer. That's just writing with AI. It may think that. So I don't want to click the button here because it, it'll tell you right here. You just have to do command enter to apply it so that it's it's set in here. It has to do with how many different things we have on the page going. And now when I click, let, let's bang. And actually, nope, that ate that too. So I'm going to have to let him know that that bug is there. Lily kills Marco. Just stop. Lily kills Marco gruesomely. She's a serial killer. And I'll press enter. And it's it's confused because it's wanting to do this. Hold on. This is how you fix this. You just go to a different page and then come back into Word Banger and it'll be fine. It won't be running the process anymore. Okay, now it should be good. Let's bang. Sorry, this is one of the things about this is uh this is why this is in beta because it has um it's got some hard edges around it. It does work. I don't want to make it seem like it's a bad piece of software, not at all. It's just one of the weird quirks. How many of you worked with like OpenAI Playground and like things have gone a little haywire and you've had to like reset it and everything like that? Like I've I've had that happen to me even in Playground. So let's see here. Oh. There we go. She reached for a knife she had hidden beneath her pillow and plunged it into his chest. <laughs> Finally, we have murder. <laughs> there were more men to claim, more lives to take, and she was just getting started. All right. So there we go. Um, now, if we actually wanted... Um, <laughs> I prefer Playground rather than 3.4, 3. or 5. Yeah, Marco. Poor Marco. Marco's dead. Um, so if I wanted... This is what's really cool about this. We also have a content editor. And the content editor, if I come over to WordBanger, um, I can actually click the button up here called Edit in Content Editor. And once I do that, now all of my information is here in my content editor. You're probably going like, why do you need a content editor, Elizabeth? Um, I actually can't really, maybe I can. We'll see if it'll work. I'm going to add the line numbers. This may not work very well. We're going to, I'm probably going to get like told, uh, Oh, wait, I think this is fixed, actually. I hope it is. So I'm going to use Mythomax and see if this works. Um, I'm going to pull out the, the lines that I have, so 74 and 76. So I'm going to say, please edit line 74 to expand it uh, for more details. And, oh, not fixed. Okay, so this is going to go to 16K. We'll see if it'll work. It may come back with me of like, no, you're not doing well, but hopefully it'll understand that I'm writing a book. Oh, nope, it did fine. Nope, it did not. Okay, I just got 3.516K to write murder. Go me. I don't recommend doing this. <laughs> We're going to have it set up where what you, what you choose over on this left-hand side is actually what, what it'll write. The reason I think that this did okay with 3.5 is because it has a very long context here. It's very clear that this is fiction that I'm writing. Um, and there's also like not a lot of, uh, there, there wasn't that much graphic stuff into it and everything like that. So you can use this tool, uh, wait on it. Don't use it to edit your not safe for work yet though uh, for my FFA students because we're by this end of this weekend, it'll the content editor will actually hook into what AI settings you set over here. But this is the content editor. Um, so coming back to WordBanger, um, I'm going to actually take all of this out. I know you guys are all freaking. Uh, I'll turn on auto writer. And what's really cool about this tool, because I still have my instructions in here, I can immediately just write it with another model. If I just want to compare models, let's check out Hermes. Um, he's probably going to repeat himself. We're going to see what happens. Um, I should have done four bangs. That was my bad. Going too fast. I need to slow down on this. Write with me. Uh, any questions so far about the word banger? I know this is kind of a weird demo here. Uh, we have actually gotten it to write very graphic, graphic material. I've, I am not really prompting it, asking it for the graphic stuff because, um, well, because this is on, live on YouTube. But uh, the, the, the thing is, is that uh, OpenAI 
uh, models do do have their content policy and you can lose your API key if you send too much, if your ratios are off, basically. Um, if you're just basically constantly trying to uh, jailbreak it. So coming back to Rexy, we have this already. Now this is Hermes, okay? So it just wrote the first instruction. I think we've earned ourselves a little bit more. Um, I would say that this writing is not as good as Mythomax. I think all of us can agree to that. It's a little bit more simplistic. Wait till I show you the pricing. So the difference, let me go to open router and show you on the activity. Okay, and I'll refresh it. So down here in Mythomax, here's where I sent like 250 tokens for 0 0.001. And it doesn't even have the Hermes on here. So let me refresh it. Did it not? Oh, it did not go through. Okay, that's my fault. I didn't say update. Why is it? I think I'm finding another bug. Joseph, this is my fault. I did not use the testing one. So let me go here. And let me go to WordBanger again and see if it's going to let me. There we go. Okay, so this is good, actually. So we did just one bang, right? And this is Mythomax, because it was an accident on my part. So this Mythomax was 85 tokens to 300 tokens came out and it cost me 0 0.0007. Let's see how much Hermes costs and how well he does. So I'm going to click update again, just to make sure and click let's bang. And now we're doing the same model, although Actually, I wasn't, I'm going to have to do this again. Apologies. I forgot to clear this out. Did I mention this tool is very brand new and I actually haven't taught it that many times. This is a very uh, broad uh, thing. But here you have Hermes and Hermes is, you know, also able to write sex and stuff. Uh, he's a little bit more simplistic. Um, he did just continue from what was already there. So one of the ways that we use models that maybe aren't as good of a writer as other models is you can start a scene off with a, with a decent writing model get some good writing style there that follows your instructions and everything. And then you can continue with a, a lesser, less smart model, so to speak, um, that will just match that writing style. It's one of the ways that you can kind of help uh, a writing style, uh, a, a cheaper model pick up. So I'm gonna actually delete this. And I still have my auto write on. I still have Hermes, so he's just gonna do one, one bang. So we're just going to do one bang so we can compare the costs. Let me go back to my window. Does it save that info in the Notion? Yes. Um, that is a really good question, Migs, and I'll show you. When we go to the main prompting tool, because no, this is not yet the serial, the serial yet. Um, MC, thank you. We kind of, I'm the worst. We're doing field trips and things like that. I wasn't feeling very well earlier this week, so I wasn't able to do all the prep work that I usually do. Um, and people had requested to see how how Rexy can write the not safe for work content, which is usually very hard for a lot of us who write uh, fiction professionally. So here we have Hermes. Hermes uh, wrote us 345 words. I think you'll notice that uh, Hermes is uh, a lot more graphic. Hermes like went for it. <laughs> I am laughing at the question of consent at the bottom of the screen for those of you can read it. Are you guys able to see it? Okay. Um, so uh, Hermes, let's see how much he cost. Are you ready? That's three zeros before the one. So in comparison, uh, Griff Mytho Max was 0 .00, so three zeros and a seven. Hermes for the for more words was 0 .0001. One is less than seven. It is seven times less than seven. So basically, Hermes is seven times cheaper uh, than um, Mytho Max. So does everybody understand that? I know math this early in the day or any time of the day sometimes is not always fun to do, but um, that is the big difference between those models. Yes. Uh, so uh, number of repeats, that's how many times you can do the um, repeats of the single instruction, or if you do five and you fill in those instruction boxes, 
which I will admit this morning it was not really listening very well. We have Insta one, two, three, four, and five. Um, if I was to go with five bangs on this with Hermes, I'll delete this out. Um, it's auto writing to Notion, and I will click Let's Bang. Um, it'll have that information. It'll it should follow instruction one, and then instruction two, and then instruction three. I think it's not really following these because I'm not saying write write this uh, stuff, and there is actually no instruction five. So I probably need to change my prompting and say write this. Um, but that's, that's on me. That's not on the model. That's my fault. Um, like I said, these cheaper models, these open source models that are not safe for work, they don't, um, they don't, uh, they're not as smart in, intrinsically smart as like GPT-4 or Claude. They're not going to get it right away. Um, yes, you would just give that into each instruction MIGS. Um, and then our prompting one is, uh, to continue writing. Okay. Thanks, Joseph. I appreciate the, the note that gave you decent results. I'm actually going to move on to prompter to show them that because I think that I did enough to show WordBanger. WordBanger is where you can very easily write uh, some, you can loop to write not safe for work content. Um, Cause this is just kind of like the introduction of Rexy. He's a little bit of a, he's a little bit bashful today. So here we have, they have sex. Let's see if it decided to have Lily kill her. Lily kill Marco. Um, I guess they're doing more sex. Okay, cool. She knew she found something special. And as the weeks, oh, they fell in love. So it did not, it did not get that. And then <laughs> here's the model. Here's Hermes talking to me. Oh, that's a beautiful story. Is there anything else you need help with? <laughs> um, you did not do the thing that I asked you to do. Uh, so let me see what the note is from our developer real fast because he's watching too and he's telling me. You should add in each instruction two to five to continue writing with the following lead below. Thank you. So we'll just add that to the top here. Continue writing um, with the beat below. And somebody asked, how do we control writing style? We're going to go like this. Let's do this. Write in the style of, I, I want to do like a very drastic style just so you guys can see the difference. Um, how about Shakespeare? Write in the style of iambic pentameter. So we'll see how that how that goes. It's probably going to be like crazy. Then we'll change the style again. So back at Marco's place. I'm really excited to see this in the style of, of Shakespeare. Write in the style of um, what could be more different than Shakespeare. How about Jane Austen? Um, you don't have to use an author's name. Obviously, that's problematic if you're trying to use modern authors. So let's actually go with a, let's describe the different, let's describe the model here. Uh, write in the style of a best-selling contemporary uh, romance novelist using um, conversational uh, word choices, um, varied sentence structure, and include slang. I'm going to say include vulgar slang. How about that? We'll see how that changes from the Shakespeare. And then I'll have this again here. Lily grabs a knife and stabs Marco. Um, we'll just say right in the style of a 19th century romantic novelist. This is going to be a hot mess, y'all. Are you here for this for this experiment? <laughs> and what I really love about this is that um, Lily grabs a knife and stabs Marco. Uh, let's see here. Lily smokes a cigarette and ponders other victims to kill. Okay. And this time we'll do something different. Um, I'll take something from the chat window. If somebody has a style that they want to see, I'll look for it right now. So I'll look in the chat. <sighs> Carl Sagan, Mario Puzo. Okay, so what I won't do for, there are not character limits on each prompt window. You can have unlimited. Um, Let's go with, okay, so instead of that, I'm going to, I'm going to describe Joe Rogan because this is just me personally. I don't like to say like right in the style of this particular person. 
um, because I, I worry about what the AI is going to go and get that. So I'm going to write in the style of a shock jock podcaster who is um, extremely conservative in his political views. Okay, so that's what we'll do. All right, well, I have no idea how this is going to come out. This is going to be very interesting. I'm going to take all this out. Um, I'm going to change the model just because Hermes, I'm sure he can do a fantastic job, but um, I've done most of this stuff with Mythomax and I know that uh, Mythomax understands instructions very well. So we're going to go ahead and click let's bang. And hopefully we're going to see some Shakespeare. We're going to see some, I'm going to have to remind, remind myself what, what set, settings we actually picked. Best-selling contemporary romance novelist. So we'll see that in bang three. Um, and then Bang 4 is a 19th century romantic novelist. That's how Lily's going to kill Marco. And then finally, when after the, after the murder, uh, Lily will reflect like a shock jock podcaster who is extremely conservative in their political views. All right. So, uh, and I get that that's not Joe Rogan. Uh, is it writing the same thing in each style or is it going to take each subsequent part of the story changing it? Is it cumulative? Uh, you're about to watch, Migs. So it's always going to read up and it should follow the instructions. We're going to find out together how well it follows the instructions of what to do. So um, I'm going to peek just because I want to see, because I think instruction two was Shakespeare. Does not look very Shakespeare to me. So that part did not work there. Um, we This one was more vulgar slang. So I think that, oh, and look at this. It moved it to the kitchen because it was expecting, I guess, that to kill. Hopefully, it better kill. Okay, so it's probably already here. Okay, so we did not get the style as much as I was hoping for. I don't think it did um, iambic pentameter for part two, unless I just missed it. Um, so here's what's interesting. They do get a cab. So it is follow the instructions more. So now it's finally following the instructions about they drive. It's not Marco's car, but it Marco's car, but it's cab. Um, so they're in the car at least. I thought you'd like it. All uh, right. Right here, right now. So they're going into the, um, the apartment. Uh, definitely started varying the sentence structure a little bit. Then she's like, let's go to the kitchen. Okay. Now, right here where it has this underline, that's where like the beats went together. They decided to order some pizza. She did not kill him. I'm sad. <laughs> this is the worst right with me ever. Uh but yeah, so this is this is the beginnings of this, and we are doing experiments um, in the FFA to learn how to prompt these tools. But I do think that there's still a lot of promise with this. Um, just the ability to get long form, not safe for content uh, scenes and things like that. You can actually write your thrillers. You can write your romance novels. You can write your erotic romance novels. Yesterday in lab, we did a whole scene um, that was uh, two men, uh, police officers, and... Um, they decided to have sex in the locker room at the police officer at the police agency or whatever, and then go to the conference room. Um, so that is uh, that. Um, it is noon. I'm trying to think here. I'm supposed to be live again at one o'clock. Um, I'm going to take five, five more minutes real fast just to show you, because we really only focus on one aspect of Rexy. Um, and I definitely want to, to show a little bit more. This is the prompter, which is actually like, like I say, this is the more, this is the older part of Rexy. I showed you guys kind of like the newest one about how, how it can write not safe for work content. Um, it can also do that here with the prompter as well. And the prompt library, uh, we do have personal prompt libraries coming. They're not quite here yet, but our prompt library is a whole taxonomy. So from ideas and inspirations to world building and all of those things. So, and they're fully customizable. So what I mean by that is if you're doing world building, for example, and I'm just going to load that prompt and then go to the, the prompter here. Again, you can choose your model on the left-hand side. You can put in the information for genre and ideas. We give you a prompt to get you started, a default prompt. But at all times in Rexy, you can change your prompt. Hi, Steve. 
you can change your system prompt. You can change your user prompt. So unlike other AI tools that are out there that kind of like pigeonhole you with um, secret prompting on the back end that you can't see or you can't control, uh, Rexy gives you full access to what you want your prompt to be. Now, I know many authors, the very first time you start prompting and things like that, um, it's it can be it can be intimidating, but that's why you know we built this tool to help people so that there there's something that they can just start off with. You can be as simple as my genre is um, cozy serial killers, and we're gonna go with uh, I need a how about this a librarian who kills people who are late returning their books. <laughs> trying to make it like silly and uh, uh, that kind of a thing. So it'll just put those ideas, that information in there. Going back to, do you need Notion? You can always click construct the prompt so you can see exactly how it's gonna put your information together inside of the prompt for you. If you wanna save that to Notion, sorry, my head is starting to hurt. Cozy serial killer prompts. And you go to it, um, the link at the bottom will take you here and you have this and you can literally copy and paste that into any AI tool that you want to use, whether that's pseudo writes first draft. Sometimes because that one does have prompting on the back end that is really hard coded for, for, for fiction writing. But if you take this to ChatGPT, if you take it to Claude, if you take it to Poe, if you use Poe, you can copy and paste this prompt and take it over there and your prompts are saved. Um, the last little thing I want to show is that I'm going to change this model to a faster one. So we're just going to run it in 16 K. Um, and I'll update the model and then I'll, I'll run this because there was a question that somebody asked, does it keep track of your settings? The answer is yes. It doesn't yet on WordBanger, but it will. Uh, we just don't have that feature set up yet because WordBanger is all of 48 hours old. Um, so this one, it's building me an entire uh, story world right now, small fictional town called Edgewater. So we've moved on from Willow Creek. Here we have some main characters, the librarian at the Whispering Pages Public Library. <laughs> She's a middle-aged woman with a keen sense of justice. Uh, although she believes she's delivering justice by punishing negligent library patrons, she struggles with the moral implications of her actions. This is just hilarious. Uh, and so uh, we have all this information here, it, giving a romantic subplot to a serial killer, late returns, overdue redemption, and the final chapter. That's the series it came up with for this prompt. Uh, so my log page, remember I created that log page? If you click your log page, it saves for you exactly the settings that you had. So as you're working, and you saw how fast I was working and not worrying because it all was just going to Notion, you have recorded for you your exact settings that you ran with that API model um, and what your response was. So I think that's important for all of us moving forward because as we're working with AI, we are trying to, you know, I had that prompt that one time that did that one thing a few weeks ago, and then you have to go find the Google Doc or something like that that has that in there. I've saved so many prompts in Google Docs and it's not very easy for me to retrieve them. Notion, it's a lot easier and, and we have even more functionality with that. Um, just to show you the auto write here, here is all of the things that we ran. You'll see, I don't have to worry, it's all right there. If I click on any of this, it has the piece of what I was running and then I can just rename it right here, uh, whatever I need to. Um, in Notion, Notion's fantastic that you just click and I can call this, um, let's see what this is. Uh, We'll go um, sexy times with Lily and Marco. And so if I go back and there's stuff that I want to save, now it's just renamed here. And now I can move this around and um, organize it in my notion for the different, uh, the different uh, projects and stuff that I have. All right. Now we're five minutes over. I'll be back on again at one o'clock. Um, if you have more questions, then please come at one o'clock. Uh, the next, the top of the next hour, come with your questions. I'll be live again in uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, I'm also going to take some Tylenol, uh, but we're going to keep going. Um, so that is just the very basics of WordBanger. Uh, you, you can't concatenate the string. Oh, one of the instruction boxes empty on a repeat. So we'll fix that. Okay. Thanks, Dave O'Man, for finding that hard edge. Um, you know, I know we have a lot to do. I do know that um, this tool is very powerful. It's going to get even better. It's going to get to be an even better dinosaur. 
Um, and that's what we are all working together as a group on. We're trying to build a tool by authors for authors and make it do the things that we need it to do so that we can keep writing great fiction for our readers. Whether you suffer from pain like I do, or you don't, and you just want to have AI, um, the Future Fiction Academy is going to be there for you if you want to use it. So anyway, thank you, everyone. I'll see you guys all in about 50 minutes. Take care.